Hi, I'm Susie. And I'm Lauren. And you're watching Five Questions With on Ask OBGYN. So choosing a pump can seem extremely overwhelming. There's so many choices out there, but there's really a couple of key things to consider. Number one, are you going back to work or are you staying home? If you're going back to work, you're gonna to wanna to choose a pump that may be lighter and more portable. Also, consider the power source. So that's number two. Are you going to be needing a rechargeable battery or a battery pack? Number three recommendation would be the uh, accessories, what accessories might come with a pump that you're looking for. So cooler pack, extra bottles, etc. Number four, I recommend uh, the suction and um, controls, the manual controls. Are they manual or are there more customizable controls for mom and she'll have more control over the pump. So looking at that. And number five, how quiet is the pump? So if you're going back to work, that may be something you wanna consider is a quieter pump that's on the market. So because this day and age we have the internet, of course you can buy a used breast pump. Uh, you'll find a lot of things like Facebook mom groups, uh, eBay, or even a family or friend who might wanna sell one to you or just give it to you. Um, however, it is never recommended to share a pump that has been used unless it's FDA cleared as a multi-user breast pump. So with a breast pump, you are expressing milk, which is a bodily fluid, um, just like you don't wanna share a toothbrush or anything else, you, you really don't wanna share a pump that's been used. Three great tips for making pumping easier would be, number one is hands-free bra. It is a must for any pumping mom. We love the Simple Wishes hands-free bra that we carry. It really fits with every type of pump that mom um, may choose. It allows mom to basically be hands-free, to hydrate, to multitask if you're at work and wanna check some emails. And also, um, if you need to do some hand massaging while you're pumping, it allows you to do that. So that's super important. Number two is always set a routine. Um, when you pump, you wanna be able to be in a comfortable place, pump at the same time, and perhaps even look at a picture of your baby to stimulate your milk let down. And number three, considering a breast pump bag. So sounds easy, but for moms that may be moving around a lot or traveling, these breast pump bags, um, in particular the Sarah Wells breast pump bag that we carry and love, has a place specifically for the pump, for um, plenty of room for your cooler pack, and also a laptop pocket, which is great if you're going back and forth to work so you don't have to bring both a laptop bag and a breast pump bag. So yes, of course pumping affects your milk supply. So breast pumping is meant to simulate breastfeeding. Uh, so naturally, if you're breastfeeding your baby, the more you feed, the more your body produces milk. So uh, just like feeding, it's a supply and demand relationship. Uh, the more you pump, the more you make. Uh, so if you're pumping constantly, you're uh, going to make more milk as long as you're doing it effectively. If you're pumping and nothing is coming out, of course there's something that's going wrong. Um, so if you are pumping or breastfeeding and you're normally expressing milk um, and all of a sudden you're not, there is either something uh, wrong with your pump. So I would recommend calling the manufacturer if you think it's uh, malfunctioning or maybe something was put together incorrectly. Um, or if you think your milk supply has dried out for some reason, definitely call a CLC or an IBCLC. Absolutely. Under the Affordable Care Act, breast pumps and um, pumping support are covered um, to moms under most, most health insurance plans. The only exception would be if there was a grandfathered plan or perhaps a union plan. Uh, but generally speaking, breast pumps are covered under the Affordable Care Act. <laughs> Blooper number one. <laughs>